Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I'm going to do a deep dive on one of the challenges of the 2021 Ideal National Championship. Both the student apprentices and the pros had to examine this board carefully and list all of the NEC code violations that they could find as part two of their first round challenges. Here is the challenge. First, let's take a look at the main panel. Here are some circuit breakers in the main panel. This circuit breaker is 15 amps. This one is 15 amps. This one is 20 amps. And this one is 20 amps. Now let's look at the wires going to these circuit breakers. Notice this one is thicker than these other three. Well, this is a 12 gauge wire. This is a 14 gauge wire. This is a 14 gauge wire and this is a 14 gauge wire. Now this 14 gauge hot wire goes to this circuit breaker, which is a 15 amp circuit breaker. So that's correct. And it's nicely installed, not too much copper showing. This blue 14 gauge hot wire is going to a 15 amp breaker. It's nicely installed, that's excellent. This 14 gauge wire is going to a 20 amp circuit breaker. Now that's not correct. A 20 amp circuit breaker should have the, the thicker wire. You see how this is thicker than the other three? This is 12 gauge wire. Okay, so this is incorrect. We've got a 14 gauge wire going to a 20 amp circuit breaker. So this is a code violation right here. Now down here, we have the appropriate 12 gauge wire going to the 20 amp circuit breaker, but we have a gap here showing copper. And you see how these are correctly installed where there's not really much copper at all showing? Well, this has quite a bit of copper showing. That's uh, unprofessional work. And let's just call that unprofessional work. And the other thing is that this circuit breaker appears to be rather loose. Check to make sure that it's installed properly. So the one serious code violation here is 14 gauge wire going to a 20 amp circuit breaker. You can find a lot of information on this subject right on the circuit breaker. Here it says on this 15 amp circuit breaker, it will handle AWG 14 to 10 gauge. Moving down in the main panel, we see another violation. This is an open knockout in the main panel. Here we are at 2020 NEC article 110.12, mechanical execution of work. A, unused openings. Unused openings other than those intended for the operation of equipment, those intended for mounting purposes, or those permitted as part of the design for listed equipment, shall be closed to afford protection substantially equivalent to the wall of the equipment. Therefore, this unused opening is a violation. For our next violation, let's look at the bus bar in the main panel. And you see the arrow pointing to a terminal there that is double tapped. There's a white and a green wire going to the same terminal. The reason is that the number of wires in a terminal is limited to that for which the terminal is designed and listed. And this particular terminal is designed and listed for one wire. On the right side of the main panel, you see a 30 amp double pole breaker and you see stranded wires coming to each terminal of the 30 amp double pole breaker. And you see that it's a sloppy job of wiring. There's pieces of the stranded wire pointed every which way, and there's lots of copper showing, and I don't think that this would pass an electrical inspection. So I'm gonna say that this is an NEC violation. For our next violation, this breaker is a square D breaker, and the panel is a Siemens panel. So to the best of my knowledge, this square D breaker is not listed for use in this Siemens panel, so that is a code violation. And while I'm showing this photograph, I'd like to point out that 
this main panel is properly bonded as you see right there with the blue arrow pointing to the green bonding screw. The sub panel is adjacent to the main panel. The blue arrow is pointing to the bond in the sub panel. The neutral and the ground must not be bonded at a sub panel. They should only be bonded at the main service panel. If you bond them anywhere other than the main service, the neutral return current now has multiple paths, including through your ground wire. So bonding a sub panel is an NEC violation. Also notice that there are both neutral wires and a ground wire connected to this bus bar. On a sub panel, the neutrals and the grounds must be separated. Here in the 2020 NEC handbook, it says except under limited conditions, 250.24 a5 prohibits connecting the grounded conductor of an electrical system to a grounding electrode or grounding electrode system anywhere on the load side of the service disconnecting means. So this is an NEC code violation. Now let's talk about this neutral conductor. You see this is a conductor and it goes to the neutral bus bar and it goes over here and it goes through here and it goes to this bus bar here on the main panel. Now notice that it is marked with some white tape at this end but it's not marked with white tape at this end and there's a specific code if this neutral conductor were 4AWG or larger. This is article 200.6B and it's for sizes 4AWG or larger, an insulated grounded conductor 4AWG or larger shall be identified by one of the following means. You go down to number 4 here. At the time of installation by a distinctive white or gray marking at its terminations. This marking shall encircle the conductor or insulation. But this neutral conductor is actually 6AWG or smaller. So what is the code for that? Here is article 200.6A, sizes 6AWG or smaller. An insulated grounded conductor of 6AWG or smaller shall be identified by one of the following means. And the one that is most pertinent to us is number one. The insulated conductor shall have a continuous white outer finish. And then number two, the insulated conductor shall have a continuous gray outer finish. So it's either continuous white or continuous gray. And then you look at three through eight, and there is no allowance to tape both ends to show that it's a neutral wire. So the color of this conductor is a code violation. Another violation is that these panels have no service connection to the grounding electrode system. You see here in the handbook in exhibit 250.9, it has a little depiction of service connection to the grounding electrode system. So these panels not being properly grounded is an NEC violation. The next violation that I'm finding on this board is that this piece of EMT is not strapped. It appears to be about 42 inches in length and there's no strap on it. Here's a graphic depiction of the code showing that a strap needs to be installed within three feet of raceway termination. So this is a code violation. For our next violation, let's look at this switch box. The problem with this switch box is that there is just too many wires. It's just overcrowded. For a reference on this, I'll put a link in my video description for a video I made called, Is This Box Overfilled by 2020 NEC code. It goes over the pertinent codes and shows you how to do the math and so forth. One thing this box does have though is an equipment grounding conductor. Now let's move over to another box and we see that this metal box does not have an equipment grounding conductor. The reference for this is article 250.148 continuity and attachment of equipment grounding conductors to metal boxes. As we were going through this electrical system, did you see any more code violations that I didn't catch? 
or if you were a competitor, did you see more while you were competing? If so, leave a comment in the comment section. I hope this video was helpful. Hey, thanks for watching Sparky Channel.